Hello, first of all, thank you for attending to this presentation. My name is Pablo Malvido, I'm a doctoral researcher in Tampere University, and I'm going to present the paper An Approach for the Bimanual Manipulation of a Deformable Linear Object Using a Dual Arm Industrial Robot, Cable Routing Use Case. This research was made within the European Project Remodel, whose aim is the development of intelligent solutions for the manipulation of deformable linear objects. If you are interested, you can find more information about the project in the webpage remodel-project.eu. This paper has received the Best Presentation Award at the IEEE International Conference on Industrial Cyber Physical Systems in 2022. Due to its changing shape, manipulation of deformable objects, such as cables, wire harnesses, medical hoses, or ropes, is a challenging task for robots, and many industrial processes involving them are still performed manually, as we can see in the images below. The main objective of this paper is the development of a generic system for deformable linear object or DLO robot manipulation that can be used for any DLO process and with any robot. This system must enable the human-robot interchangeability, so the robot must be able to work on a human-centric platform. Therefore, dual-armed robots will be emphasized, as they have similar morphology to humans. The system must enable the fast and easy robot reconfiguration, requiring little to no manual programming and without the need of robotic experts. Finally, the system performance will be tested in a specific use case, routing cables. The developed system is hardware agnostic. This means that it would work with any dual arm robotic platform with enough reachability. This is possible thanks to its high reconfigurability, adapting the robot movements to the key points and dimensions of the work cell components. The trajectory planning in the Cartesian space and the use of ROS as the system middleware, allowing to send motion commands to robots of different branches with just minor modifications. However, for the implementation of the system for a cable routing use case, the hardware setup shown in the images was used. A Motoman SDA dual arm robot equipped with WSG50 parallel grippers with concentric fingers that allow three positions open, slide, and grasp. A cable holder platform from where the cables are picked initially, and a cable routing platform with guides through which the cables have to be routed. As introduced in the previous slide, ROS is used as a middleware for the integration of the different modules of the system. As can be seen in the diagram, the system is composed of two main modules. The information module reads and processes the input files, extracting useful information. These input files are the ones used to configure the system, providing all the necessary information about the process. The trajectory generator module is the one that calculates the trajectories for both arms in the Cartesian space and then converts it into the joint space to send it to the robot. To determine the arm's waypoints, this module requires knowledge about the process, so it requires all the necessary data to the information module through ROS services. The input files can be classified into three groups depending on the type of information that they provide. The first group provides information about the working environment. Each platform of the work cell, in this case there are two, the cable routing platform and the cable holder platform, is completely defined with three files. A CAD 3D model of the platform assembly in X3D format, used to extract the position of the child components with respect to the parent component origin. In this case, the position of the guides with respect to the platform base. A file with a description of all the different CAD component models, including their dimensions and the pose of their key points referred to their origins. Finally, a third file is used to relate each component of the CAD file to its model description. This information is processed by the information module, extracting all the key points with respect to the robot cell origin. The two platforms and their key points can be seen in the images in the right with the Arby's visualization. The second group corresponds to the files providing information about the manipulated objects. In this case, just one file is necessary, as just cables are used. But more files could be used for more complex components like wiring harnesses. Finally, the third group provides information about the process. In this case, the sequence of operations that has to be performed. All the extracted information can be requested by the trajectory generator module through ROS services. Regarding the trajectory generator module, it starts requesting the sequence of operations to the information module. This sequence defines which operations to do, where, this is, in which guides, and with which components, the cables. 
Then, for each component that appears in the process sequence, it requests information about it to the information module. Once this is done, the sequence of operations is executed. Each different type of operations is defined as a parametric function that depends on the dimensional and geometrical information of the components that was extracted initially. Each of these functions retrieves the waypoints for both arms and a novel movie based dual arm motion plan generator is used to calculate the plan that will be sent to the robot. In this case, there are three types of parameterized operations, peak cable, place connector and root cable. All of them receive as input parameters the key points and the dimensions of the components where the operation has to be performed, as all the waypoints are defined with respect to this. In the case of peak cable, the operation starts moving both arms to the guide's offset poses. Then they move to the grasping poses and grasp the cables. The arms are retracted to the offset poses again and centered. In order to have a good position for the future connector placing, the arms are joined by sliding the arm that is farther from the connector. This is done against the gravity, to avoid entanglements as we will see in future slides. Finally, the set axis of the grippers and the routing platform are aligned, getting ready for the next operation. The place connector operation starts aligning the x-axis of the robot torso and the routing platform. Then the arms move to the guide offset poses and insert the connector moving to the insert connector poses. In the image we can see how all the hand poses are calculated with respect to the guide key point, considering its dimensions and different offset values. Finally, the connector hand is open and retracted. The root cable operation starts reorienting the routing gripper towards the next guide. Then, if the cable is not in tension yet, the routing arm will pull the cable towards the next guide, but if it is in tension, it will slide it. Once the hand is at a certain distance from the next guide, it moves to the side, sliding the necessary cable length to lift the cable over the guide while keeping the cable in tension. Therefore, this length is the radius of the lifting circular movement. Before lifting, the second gripper grasps the cable close to the previous guide, where its position is known, preventing it to go out of the guide. Then the cable is lifted, doing a circular movement until aligning it with the guide x-axis. Finally, the cable is pulled to pull it in tension and insert it in the guide with another circular movement. In these images, we can see how all the movements are calculated considering the guide's key points and dimensions, as well as some predefined offsets. Regarding the calculation of the cable lifting radius, the minimum necessary cable lengths for lifting the cable and for inserting it are calculated, selecting the maximum value in order to avoid collisions. A movie based dual arm motion plan generator has been developed to command the robot. The inputs for this motion planner are the waypoints of both arms calculated by the different operations. The motion plan of each arm is initially calculated individually using the existing MoveIt functions. This means that when calculating one arm, it doesn't know anything about the other arm's simultaneous movement, and it will consider the other arm to remain all the time in the initial position. Therefore, if one arm will pass through the initial position of the other arm, the trajectory must be split into smaller successive trajectories, or MoveIt will retrieve a collision error. Finally, the movements of both arms are merged and synchronized, generating a dual arm motion plan. Here we can see an example of why the trajectory should be split in smaller successive trajectories. Even if both arms are supposed to move in the same direction, when the right arm movement is planned alone, MoveIt will detect a collision with the left arm, retrieving an error as the final position cannot be reached. This is solved by planning and executing smaller consecutive trajectories. The resultant synchronized movements have been proved to be fluid during the experimental evaluation of the system. In the left images, we can see the last joint trajectory point generated by MoveIt for the right and the left arm. Each of them is composed of the joint values, velocities and accelerations for all their joints at that instant in time. Velocities are zero as this is the final point of the trajectory. In the right image, we can see how both joint trajectory points are merged into one dual arm plan with all the joint values. It can be also seen that the total execution time is equal to the time of the slower arm, 
and the velocities, accelerations, and times of the faster one are adjusted accordingly. The number of points of the dual arm joint trajectory message will be the same as the plan with more points, interpolating the values of the intermediate points for the other arm. Finally, this joint trajectory message is sent to the move group composed of the two arms. The system has been validated for three different cable routing paths, following a straight line and with one and two changes of direction. In these images, we can see the trajectory generated for both arms, green for the right and red for the left. In the three cases, all the movements are generated successfully, according to the description of the operations. In the first three images, we can see the trajectories for three different routing operations, where we can observe the circular lifting and inserting movements. In the last image, we can see an example of the peak cable operation, where we can observe how the cable sliding against the gravity is done. The three previous routing paths were tested also with the real robot. In this case, we can see how the robot is doing the peak cable operation. Now it's sliding the cable against the gravity, doing a circular movement, so the cable cannot be entangled while doing this. Then the grippers are aligned with the platform, it proceeds to place the connector and then it pulls the cable to apply tension to it. Once we are at a certain distance from the next guide, we grasp the cable with the other hand, preventing it from going out to the previous guide and we perform the circular movements to insert the cable in the next guide. Now the same process is repeated. And finally, the cable is inserted in the last guide. After this, the process is completed and the two grippers are released. In conclusion, a reconfigurable cyber physical system for routing a cable in a human centric workplace using a dual arm robot has been developed. The system was tested for three different cable routing paths, following a straight line and with one and two changes of direction. The dual arm trajectories were generated and executed correctly in the three experiments, and the cable was successfully routed in all of them. As future directions, we are planning to include sensor information in the system, such as tactile vision or torque data. This will enable the system to be applied in more complex use cases, where perception is required, such as wiring harness routing, where the different cable branches have to be separated and routed through different paths. Thank you very much for your attention and if you have any questions you can ask me by email.